Hello students in this session we are going to revise chapter number 5 that is separation of substances so do you remember what were the different topics that we have studied in this chapter in this chapter we have studied the different methods that are used for separating a substances isn't it so let's begin with this chapter we notice the different instances in our day to day life where the substances are being separated from a mixture so in our day to day life we come across many experiences in which we separate the substances from the mixture but before that we should know what is a mixture a mixture is made up of two or more components when two or more components are mixed together they form a mixture and these components are also in mixture these components can also be separated by using simple physical methods the mixture are of two types homogeneous mixture in which the substances or the components are uniformly distributed throughout like if we mix salt and water we get a salt and water solution so in that mixture the salt is evenly distributed throughout the water so this kind of a mixture is known as a homogeneous mixture and what is heterogeneous in which the substances or the components are not uniformly distributed if we take sand and water do sand dissolve in water no we does not get get a one entire face it forms the two distinct layers one of a sand and another of the water the contents the substances are not uniformly distributed in the heterogeneous mixture let's see the different examples we come across in our day to day life or for separating a substances the tea leaves are separated from the liquid with the strainer so tea is made by using the different components like milk sugar water tea leaves these components are used to prepare the tea when tea is prepared we need to separate the tea leaves from the prepared tea isn't it so what we do we filter that so tea leaves are separated from the liquid with the help of strainer grains is separated from the stock and third example is milk or curd is churned to separate the butter churning process is done for the separation of butter from milk or curd but why do we need why there is a need to separate the substances why we should sep separate the substances we need to separate the harmful or the non useful substances so sometimes in our mixture contains harmful or the non useful unwanted substances that need to be separated so separation is important separation is also done to remove the impurities or the non useful components the impurities are also separated from a mixture let us study the first method for the separation of substances that is hand picking method hand picking method is the simplest method for the separation of substances it is used to separate solid solid mixture so as the name suggest hand picking the impurities or the unwanted substances are simply picked by our hand it is used for the separation of slightly larger sized impurities like the pieces of dirt stone and husk from wheat rice or pulses so slightly larger sized impurities like dirt snow stone or husk particles can be separated from wheat rice or pulses hand picking method is useful when the size of the particle is large enough so that we can see it clearly the size the shape or the color of the unwanted materials is different than that of the useful material in that case the hand picking method is useful 
the quantity of the impurities is usually not very large so the impurities that need to be separated from the useful component in that the quantity of the impurities should not be large as it is separated by our hands manually so the quantity of the impurities in the hand picking method is usually not very large in the image you can see the different examples the green or the black color grains can be separated when they are mixed together by hand picking method as they are larger in size and the color of both are also different so are also different so we can easily distinguish between them and they can be separated easily the next method that we have studied is threshing so when is the threshing method useful the process that is used to separate the grain from the stalk is threshing so what do you mean by threshing threshing is the process in which the grains is separated from the stalk in this process stalks are beaten to free the grain seeds so what is done in this process the stalks are beaten so that the grains can be separated from the stalk it can be done with the help of bullocks machines can also be used to thresh the large quantities of the grains so nowadays the bullocks or the machines are used to thresh the large quantities of the grains so how the bullocks can be useful in threshing of the grains so the grains that need to be threshed are spread on the threshing ground and the bullocks are made to walk on the grains in the circular manner so the continuous trampling of the grains under the bullocks feet result in threshing of the grains then the third method that we have studied was winnowing so when is the winnowing method useful winnowing method is used to separate the heavier and the lighter components of a mixture by wind or by the blowing air so when is this method useful when a mixture contains both heavier and the lighter components and these components can be separated by the wind or by the blowing air This method is commonly used by the farmers to separate the lighter husk particles from the heavier seeds of the grain. So, when is this method useful? Farmers use this method to separate the lighter husk particles from the heavier seeds of the grain. They allow the husk and the seeds mixture to fall from the certain height. So, what happens? The husk being lighter in weight Uh, moves is carried away by the wind and the grains vertically falls downward so this way husk and the grains can be separated from each other the next process that we have studied for the separation of substances is sieving so what do you mean by sieving sieving is the process in which a solid is stirred using a mesh the bigger particles will remain on the mesh while the smaller particles will pass through the holes in the mesh the mesh contains the holes and it will allow the smaller particles to pass through it while the bigger particles are retained on the mesh you might have seen this example at your home when we sieve the floor what happens when we sieve the floor the flour particles being smaller than the holes of the mesh will easily pass through the holes while the bigger particles or the impurities like the stone will be retained on the mesh by this way we can separate the flour from the impurities using a sieve the particles are separated on the basis of their size and this process is known as sieving so in the sieving process the particles are separated on the basis of their size the sieve of the different mesh sizes are also available to separate the different mixtures then we studied about sedimentation decantation and filtration so what do you mean by sedimentation when the heavier component in a mixture settles after water is added to it the process is called as a sedimentation so if we will take the mixture of sand and water and you will keep it aside 
for some time. What you will observe? That the sand will settle down at the bottom of the beaker while the water will be above the sand. So, the sand that settles at the bottom of the beaker is known as a sediment and the water is known as a supernatant. This process of settling down the heavier component of a mixture is known as a sedimentation process. To speed up the sedimentation process, the loading process is done. What do you mean by loading? Loading is the process in which the sediments are settled at the faster rate. For example, to the solution of sand and water, if we will add the alum, what the alum will do? It will make the sand particles heavier and they will settle down at the faster rate. Then decantation. Now, the supernatant above the sediment when it is poured into the another vessel, this process is known as a decantation process. That is, the water is removed. This process is called as a sedimentation process. Then filtration. What do you mean by filtration? Filtration is the better method by decantation. A liquid is not completely separated from an insoluble solid. So filtration is a better method. What happens in the decantation? The liquid cannot be completely separated from the insoluble solid. Or sometimes there are the chances when we pour the water or the supernatant into the another vessel, the insoluble mixture can also, the impurities can also be poured with it. So filtration is the better method. How the filtration process is done? The supernatant liquid is slowly poured along a glass rod into a funnel. So for the filtration process, the assembly need to be set. We need a funnel, a beaker and a stand and the filter paper. What is done? The supernatant liquid is slowly poured along the glass rod into the funnel. The solid collects on the filter paper. So inside the funnel we will place a filter paper. So the solid will collect on the filter paper whereas the liquid will pass through it. And we will get the clear liquid that is known as a filtrate. So we will end our session here. In this session we have studied the different methods by which we can separate the substances from the mixture. So the remaining lesson we will revise in our next session.